I'm Gene Gravely, and we're at uh, Bryceville Cemetery. That That is the Burnwell Bible Church of God that is behind us. We're in my old stomping grounds of when I was a kid where I spent most of my early life in and out and around this particular place here. You just looked at the grave of uh, Charles F. Goodwin. Goodman, I should say. Better known as Rusty of the Happy Goodman family. You know, they were raised down between here and the river, and most of these uh, people over here in this area are related to them one way or another. I know some of their first cousins and known them for years. But you've got to understand, back when I was here, after Rusty came out of the Korean War and came back, they were still here, and then they started, they were singing a little bit, singing here and yonder, and finally, they just went into it full time, and they were in and out of here. The pastor's wife here was uh, uh, a sister to Rusty's mother, and so uh, she was married to Herschel Nix, who was the pastor of this church at that time. You just you just have so many memories, and you remember Sam. And him, and he was a crazy thing, and he had even put a, one of those little beanie caps on with a propeller. Now, he's not buried here, but this is one of the stories and the fond memories that I have. And he would come into the store, and, and uh, that old big old long Cadillac, and he'd just have fun. This is the father of Rusty. Sam, Howard, and all the girls and the rest of the boys, this, this is their father here. He was a Spanish-American War soldier, and uh, he was buried here. My uncle had an old country store here, Horace Roberts. And, and Horace loved the good southern gospel music, and he loved to hear them sing. And at that time, every decoration around the 1st of June, the first Sunday in June, I believe it is, they came back here and they sang here even after they were on the road. They still came back because, like I said, th this is Kenfold's place and, and Sam's and the Howard and, and Rusty's daddy are buried here. And he's also Sam. He's buried right behind where we're, the camera is today. But that particular year, Horace wasn't able to go. What wasn't able to go here. It was in 68 and he had cancer, and he couldn't come over here to the church to hear him sing. So my grandmother and, and everybody started talking about it, and then what happened was Herschel Nix's wife was their aunt and knew that Horace wanted to hear him sing, and, and after they got through singing here, they went to the store and sang for him. And there's just some things you just don't never forget. You know, a lot of times you get to thinking about different holiday seasons and you get to thinking about Christmas and what happened on one Christmas or you have relatives in or, or someone's here this Christmas and the next year they're no longer here because they've passed away, they've died and, and we've lost someone. Well, on this particular Christmas, December 25th, 1949, I was nine and a half years old and that night, I got in the pickup truck with my Uncle Horace Roberts driving and my granddaddy, George Roberts, on the passenger side. And I was hanging along and tagging along with them because Horace was coming over here to go back to a wagon mine that he operated, which would be back over to my left. The road came in between the church, came off the, the old road up here, and came off and came down the same way it does today. And it came down to where the cemetery is, and it traveled that direction until you reached a curve, and you, you took that curve to the left. Well, Horace wanted to go there and check and feed the mules because it was a wagon mines. And I know a lot of you don't understand what I'm talking about. But this particular night, rounded the curve into the straightaway and looked and saw a man on the right-hand side of the road. This guy was leaned up against a tree, 
and his head kind of slumped down, and a dog was laying there beside him. Now, I don't know how I can remember all this, but th this is a factual statement that he stopped the truck, Horace did, got out of the truck and found Joe McDonald dead. And that's one thing you never forget is the sight of a person who's who's been shot to death. That, that first one you see like that, you never forget it. You never forget death anyway. So went back to the store and they called the sheriff's office and the sheriff came out and Horace and my uncle Willard Birmingham came over here, but me and my granddaddy, we got to stay behind. But that particular day, they never did solve this homicide. And it wasn't a year until, or about a year until his son died in an automobile wreck. The, these, these things like this, you just never forget these old stories and we need to remember more and more of them. And you know, I wrote an article about this in, in uh, a magazine for a publication out of Tuscaloosa. That magazine went all over the country, and I didn't know it, but Joe McDonald's granddaughter called me, wanted to know where the grave was, and I told her, and because of what I had found and published on that day, they drove all the way back from Arkansas and got to see that grave. We never know what we're going to do to help somebody else out.